Hi everyone, this is my video about what's wrong with Independence Day Resurgence. And um, what's wrong? <laughs> Usually these videos are just a picture with some audio track and then a different picture for the thumbnail. But for some reason my power director will let will not let me separate the audio track. So I don't know why. Um, but uh, so I'm doing this. It bothers me. Uh, it also bothers me that Google has a dark background even though it's supposed to be in light mode. Anyway, um, uh, I'm watching a lot more movies these days because I had all of these late books for half a decade and now they're going out so I have free time. So I'm watching just kind of whatever. Uh, I watch like multiple different things in a row like five to ten minutes at a time. So anyway, over like a week uh, I watched Independence Day Resurgence, which I've never heard a good thing about, and that's fair. But this is a really, really weird movie, because if, if you say it's bad, that doesn't really seem appropriate. If you say it's good, that's just insane. But also, if you say it's okay, that doesn't fit either. What this is, is a bad movie with a lot of good things in it. The first thing, I just got a shout out. Nobody says that anymore, shout out. Is the production design. And I saw consistently when I uh, skimmed some articles, some reviews of it, that everyone basically said, this movie looks great. I mean, it's terrible, but it looks great. And I mean, everything looks great. The ships, the, uh, uh, the weapons, the gear, the headquarters at one time the uh, the uh, the humans they have this base they go to and it reminds me of uh, well they had this GI Joe playset of a base but then in the cartoon that base was like 20 times larger but with the same shape it had this giant cannon I really should have gotten an image of it ready uh, but I didn't um, but I was like oh my gosh it's the GI Joe base uh, and um, I mean everything the uniforms the fighters literally everything looks cool i don't know who was designing things yeah they do redesign or they reuse some designs from the first movie which uh i have a question now everyone on the planet saw independence day when it first came out did anyone see it again not that summer I'm talking about, has anyone in the history of Earth, after 1996, said, I'm going to go watch Independence Day? Because I would concede that that has never happened. Uh, Independence Day was very much of the time, of the moment, of the point in Will Smith's career where he could do no wrong. And I saw it. I enjoyed it. Never thought about it again. I don't get the feeling there's some like fanfic community that's just writing Independence Day. Like it was, you went to go see it in 1996 and you never thought about it again. And you would just think <coughs> about it because, you know, every like five years they would say, oh, they're making a sequel, but Will Smith, uh, we're not sure if he's going to sign on. And apparently after like 20 years, they're like, whatever, we'll just do this without Will Smith, and uh, whew, it's uh, it's rough. So um, uh, the idea is, what if the aliens came back with uh, larger ships? Like, um, there's something about this movie that's very, I can't think of a better word, lovable, because it's so stupid, but it's not aware. Like at one point they have this mega ship that literally is curved to the curvature of the earth and it lands in the atmosphere and it takes up like a fifth of the atmosphere and then everything's just fine because <laughs> because displacing a fifth of the atmosphere very suddenly would have no re there's not even storms there aren't breezes it just goes down into our atmosphere and just occupies 20% of the volume of the atmosphere and everything is fine. 
So they couldn't get Will Smith, and uh, uh, they got Bill Pullman back. They got Jeff Goldblum back. They got what's his name from Taxi back to play his dad. Who? Oh, they got Brent Spiner back. Um, uh, was oh yeah, Vivica A. Fox was just like in one uh, scene. Uh, but um, anyway, so uh, who's the lead character? Them? Them? Everybody? Everybody is the main character. The first one was obviously Will Smith was the lead, but then it was very much of an un, un ensemble. Um, this one is all ensemble. Like you would think, oh, Jeff Goldblum, like he's in it? I feel like he did less than he did in the original movie, which I don't remember that well. I just remember Welcome to Earth and them using like a macbook to install a virus on a spaceship um uh this one i would actually here's the deal i would say i like this one better because that other one was doing this this thing uh you know it's like oh it, it, we're gonna have this story with the family and this story with the the cool guy and this story with the nerdy scientist like this one was just like hey fuck it just everyone has guns and they're shooting at aliens like whatever and then there's just like one little callback to the original movie where all of a sudden there's, there's like a family of kids and then uh, Jeff Goldblum's dad takes them under his wing. And then for some reason, I don't even remember why. I remember their car was dying and they got into a bus, but then they decide to like cut across the salt flats. And then by an amazing coincidence, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, so one of the things I kept thinking when it was so dumb is I feel like a lot of these type of movies are made very condescending like this is what this is what you know Joe Lunchpail will just love it felt like everyone making this dumb movie like thought they were doing a good job like they're like yeah we're we're crushing it I mean no Will Smith that was a problem but like this is great and it wasn't <laughs> but it looks so good like every shot looks my favorite part is at the end yeah there's a stupid bit with a bus but they have this queen and she's huge and spoiler she survives a assassination attempt i mean she is a head of state it's an assassination it's not a murder um but uh then she's like galumphing <laughs> like galloping over the salt flats and like it just looked really cool like uh a lot has been made lately well, they're, where they will show CGI from like 20 to 30 years ago and it looks great. And then they show like the CGI from uh, Thor Love and Thunder and it's like, oh my God, it looks horrible. Um, but this was 2016 and uh, man, everything looks good and it's so dumb. It's just stupid. So... Um, I will say that uh, Brent Spiner, who uh, I've heard is just a huge asshole, like even among assholes, he is considered an asshole. So he comes he comes back as the wacky scientist who uh, he's gay now. Him and this other scientist kept calling each other baby. And I thought like there was this really dopey, like silly sense of humor in the first one. That really isn't in the second one. Um, so I was like, the other thing about this movie is it acts like people really like the first one. Like they like they just think about it. Like no, at one point there's a there's a reporter. I don't see her here. Maybe this one. No, this was like the daughter of the president. Anyway, she's not in the top ten of the cast. But anyway, like they show her and they like hold the camera on her, and I'm just like. Was she in the first movie? I don't I don't really remember the first movie. I don't think anyone does. Um, but um yeah, it was it was kind of fun. Really stupid. Looked fantastic, but man, the uh the writing was just awful, but in a good hearted way where I think they thought they were doing a good job. So I don't know what to say. Uh is it a recommend? Uh if you just like to see things happening in a sci-fi setting, 
if you just like to see cool laser guns, there was an African warlord that was just kind of there. Um, they went to go uh, ask him. And, oh, I almost forgot. The coolest thing about this movie is, and you would think they would do this a lot more, but we have an alien invasion in 1996. And we win, and then we take all of their technology and we use it and we replicate it. So the Earth of 2016 is very advanced. So I feel like they don't really do that a lot. Um, like when humans interact with, you know, it'll just be like a couple of things. Like, no, like this changed like all of society, like every vehicle. Well, not all, all the military part of society. Um, but yeah, at one point they go to an African warlord to like consult and he's like stabbed them in the back. It's like, okay. And then they're leaving. He's like, I'm coming with you. It's like, yeah, sure. Why not? Um, but he was my favorite character, but he wasn't really in it, uh, that much. Um, uh, in fact, you kind of just lose track of him. But um, very, very silly movie that looks way too good, considering how dumb it is. Um, I thought, uh, what's his name? The, uh, the brother? Liam Hemsworth? I thought he was really good. I'm not sure what they're doing with him. You can kind of tell in this movie that they thought he was just about to blow up. And I think he has the possibility. I don't know. What does he do now? I just remember him in Expendables 2. He's in a lot of stuff, but obviously he's not huge. But I kind of feel like at the time they thought he was going to be huge. But, um, yeah. It was fun. It was dumb. Looked great. And uh, that's it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.